Warning. The following video clip contains strong language and has therefore been rated 18 plus by the YouTube NECCA. Viewer discretion is advised. You without a mustache is just very, very unsettling. <laughs> Tilda Swinton, that's it. Tilda Swinton? The ancient one? Yeah, Lewis looks like Tilda Swinton without the mustache. I'm gonna put like Tilda Swinton right beside it. My name is Tilda Swinton, and this is We Got Issue. It's just funny coming out of this. <laughs> Tilda Swinton? <laughs> Ass. Today we've got for you five books I'll be reviewing because I got no choice, because my Sundays are not ruined. Thank you. Saturday. Well, technically, Sundays. And Sundays are still ruined because I gotta be here on Sunday, too. That's true. Thanks a lot, Rachel. You couldn't have been born any other day. Happy birthday. <laughs> Looks like he's and you can get these Same books as at always. Y'all yeah. show you show up an hour late, and you show up a half an hour late. Y'all been wasting my time today. It's 4:19. Lewis, just do your thing. He still looks pretty though. He is always fucking pretty, and he always complains. I'm pretty on the outside I'm because the world is unfair. I'm pretty on the outside, but ugly on the inside. I bet you're still fucking pretty on the inside, you ass. Now, the address, please. You can find all these books at MCC at... Say, don't say it like a robot. 34 Southwest A Street. I don't know what the zip code is, it's not really important. We're behind the Starbucks, we're in your cold stone. At this point, if you're watching this video, you must know where we are. Alrighty, and oh, so for Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Bureau. ADD. Yeah, we're cool that way. We got Vero. We got the Vero. Sounds like a Venera disease, but let's, that's not here or there. Alrighty, first off, we got Spider-Man versus Deadpool, issue 28. First off, we got Spider-Man versus Deadpool, number 28. Essentially, nothing happens here. It's just the bromance continues from Spider-Man and Deadpool. Deadpool telling Spider-Man a deep dark secret about himself. Spider-Man has no clue what he's talking about because it really wasn't Spider-Man he was talking to. It was a super villain dressed up as Spider-Man. Or was it a robot? I'm not sure, it was a very confusing book. And it pretty much goes off by Spider-Man not really want to do anything about Deadpool, and Deadpool doesn't really want to do anything about Spider-Man because in the end they both really care about each other. It's a pretty funny book. Some low-key jokes, some non-low-key jokes. And them trying to explain to each other ass pers Every time I try to say that damn word. Perspective teams. Um, why they didn't capture them, or why they weren't, didn't the other one kill the other one. And it pretty much goes on like that. It's pretty fun. Spider-Man vs. Deadpool number 28. Give it a read. This gets three clown chickens and a spaghetti bowl. Next is Moon Knight. I didn't really enjoy this one too much, mostly because I had no term of reference. It's my first Moon Knight book. And it was just a confusing wobble doodle of crazy. He's imagining his best friend dying like a zombie, cutthroat, pretty much living undead. We're talking about Walking Dead level shit. Just for his daughter to ask him, when are you going to be done talking to the imaginary friends of yours and say mommy? It was both cute, disturbing, highly would not recommend a child reading this. And right after that, he gets into a fight, he removes some people's fingers, breaks some bones, and... Plays Pirates of the Caribbean for a little bit. You're covering his face. Okay, face. Is this, this is good. The Moonlight gets two feetless chickens, one headless chicken, and a second headless chicken dressed up as Moon Knight. Where are all these butchers? Man? These butchers could should be fired. By <laughs> 
These were half-assed butchers. <laughs> They're operating out of the back of Wisconsin. <laughs> Next is Iron Man number. Next up is Iron Man number five hundred and s you're like a fuzzy cube ball. Next up is the Invincible Iron Man number five nine seven because that's not annoying to say. Uh, it's you shut up. You shut up right now. He has a voice. You shut up right now. Uh, the story picks up with Riri Williams going back to college because apparently she can't be successful enough to start her own company with Stark Tech that she built on her own. All of Stark's of... Uh... Technology. No, 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 no. Uh, all of Stark's board members took away all of Riri Williams' uh, Iron Man suit technology, even though it was not technically there, so then she invented it and her coding is different, so... <laughs> you know. Technically speaking, it doesn't belong to them. Typical Iron Man style, she pressed a little button and then the iron suit came back to her. No real cool references, there's not really anything. Apparently, Tony Stark's brother was also in the book and they're trying to find Tony Stark. So it's a really big, giant, redundant story about trying to find Tony Stark rather than doing something really cool with it. There. That dude's are gonna ruin his car. I know. He does not deserve that car if he did that to the parking. $20 he doesn't use I have to agree with them. And also it goes back and forth between this and the in, the infamous Iron Man, which is just Victor Von Doom dressed up as Iron Man and him not trying to pretty much just steal the identity of Iron Man for some odd reason. What are his hopes and dreams and aspirations to become Iron Man? I don't know. I thought the story was whack, so I kind of gave it up. It doesn't make sense. Victor Von Doom is such a badass character as a villain. And then you're making him do like, oh, what's the meaning of my life? Maybe I am supposed to be good, maybe I'm supposed to be... No, you're a badass motherfucker that was essentially God. You don't need an identity crisis, you are God. And you killed gods. Maybe it's just a bad idea and we should burn it all in hell. It gets a, a raw egg. The, Iron, the Invisible Iron Man gets a raw egg for irrelevance and ruining Victor Von F and Doom, which should be his second middle name. Just one raw egg. Just one raw egg. One raw green egg. In honor of Victor Von Doom, he used to be green. Now he's just pink. Which I have no issues with the color pink. It's just they decided that's the color of his laser beams. Next up is... The Punisher War Machine issue number 221. I didn't even know there was a previous War Machine, but that's not important. So pretty much it takes place with uh, Frank Castle being found by a fishing boat in, and his machine just st doesn't start working. So he really goes out of his way to go into what I would assume is some kind of place in Russia and starts killing shield agents that went uh, all hydro. So, like usual, it's just about Frank Castle going on a rampage, killing people to get to a bigger fish by killing much smaller fish, and maybe medium fish sometimes, and medium large fish. Let's just say he killed a lot of fish, so AKA human, human beings. Uh, the Punisher War Machine story arc gets... The entire story arc? The entire story arc. The entire story? Yeah, just part of that or Did you read the entire story? You shut up. Three chickens, a combat knife, and an explosive bomb. Just a hint of nitroglycerin. Last week, last week you gave a, a thing. Uh, last week you gave a rating of three chickens and a knife. Is this three chickens and a combat that, that knife? That was a that was a sexy more? knife. Okay, this so is a battle combat knife. You want to mention your sponsor in Red Bull in the middle? Red Bull, because I love Red Bull. Red Bull, would you like Red Bull? I would like Red Bull, let's share Red Bull. Next up, by Valiant, we got Bloodshot number- Valiant. What did I say? Valiant was a Valiant. Valiant. We have Bloodshot number Valiant. six. Okay, go to the The story around, uh, the story re- 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 Up next, we got Bloodshot yeah. Salvation from Valiant Comics. And it pretty much takes place that Bloodshot's daughter is dying because her nanites are failing and he has to try to make miracles and impossible feats for her to be saved. 
and essentially um, the only person who can come up with an idea for it is Ninja K. Yes, because everybody gets to be involved in Bloodshot. I don't know why. I haven't read the rest of the books. This is one book. I love it. So far, um, I really have no reference point pretty much from every other book because Kim is me and it doesn't give me a book that I've read like a billion of versions of. You haven't even read that. Bloodshot? It is pretty good. The art's solid. Um, story, I feel like it does make good pacing. And unlike Marvel, it's Jeff Lemire. And this is very important. When you make a story and you don't understand why something is there or some big ass reference, you make a reference point where we can find out why they're making this or why they're there. A footnote. A footnote or just like read issue whatever. That's super nice. We're less confused and we can go back and read the book. So far, uh, and the Shadow Man appears to help uh, Bloodshot help his daughter by going into the land of the dead and some fucked up shit happens. You just gotta pick up the book and read it. Bloodshot gets the full lumberjack breakfast oh, you get a lumberjack breakfast. and the Ron Swanson stamp. That's all of the bacon and eggs. That's all the bacon and eggs they have. From now till Monday, which Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Sunday and fr Monday. <laughs> you don't know your days of the week? No, I don't. I barely know the months. Uh, Monday, from months, not days of the week. <laughs> Monday, from Monday to Friday. Monday, Friday. That's a fair point. Who cares? From today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, these books that I just reviewed are 20% off. Come pick them up if you want to. And if not, after that, you'll no longer get them for 20% off. And don't forget that you can get them here at the library of MCC. We're at 142nd, 34 Southwest 8th Street, or behind the Starbucks. Hold on, I thought you were singing this. I'm not singing this. It's not 142nd, it's 142. 14234? Is that what you want me to say? 14234 Southwest 8th Street, 33184, Miami, Florida. We're in the United States. <laughs> On the planet Earth. <laughs> forgot the zip code. But at least he didn't sound like an undead. Be lost. Okay, yeah, from now on, please come phone. right here. Should be somewhere if I can figure out in the bottom where the address is. It'll be your address. It will be my address. Do not go there. If you guys get lost, just Google Maps. That's how you get shot. There's no excuse. By mistake. It's Rachel's birthday. What's your happy birthday in the comments? Uh, it's like the only serious thing we're ever going to say, like once a year. Every once in a while. Every once in a while. Tim has a new haircut, so please be fun for it in the comments. Uh, um, and who do I look like? This episode has been a complete, a complete train wreck. So thank you for watching. Uh, please follow us on all the social medias. Subscribe to our YouTube page. And if you guys have any questions, you can always call the store or send us use the app. Or email me at noneofyourbusiness.com. And like always, I am Tilda Swindon. I love you. Call your mother. <laughs>